Amen. So keep your place there in Hosea chapter number four. So the title of the sermon tonight is The Democrats and the Republicans. All right. The Democrats and the Republicans. All right. Now that I have your attention, um, Hosea chapter number four is what we're going to look at tonight. But Hosea is a perfect book for the times that we are living in. I mean, I, I don't want to ring my own bell for choosing Hosea to study through, but it's perfect. I mean, the Bible has such a great history of the fall of a nation. And that's really what we're looking at in Hosea is the decline of a nation. And, you know, I often, th I often think when I look at our nation and I, I look at the things that we're going through and the things that are happening in our nation, I, I think like, does no one know any history? Does no one understand what has happened to other civilizations in the past? And the fact is that there is history of fallen empires. That, I mean, how many dozens of, of civilizations and empires um, have risen and, and fallen um, throughout um, human history? But, you know, the Bible has the greatest detail as far as the historical downfall of a nation. And with the book of Hosea, we're looking at the downfall of the nation of the northern kingdom of Israel, which was a particularly wicked nation and was turning against God. And we're looking at the stages that it goes through, the things that happen, and how God responds to those things. So as we're looking at that, we can model that upon what we're seeing today. And that's what I want to do tonight. I want to look at Hosea chapter number four and some of the things um, that are, are talked about in Hosea chapter four in the first few verses that um, might seem a little confusing, these verses, but I want to show you how that directly applies um, to what we're dealing with today. So the title of the sermon, again, is The Democrats and the Republicans. I'm going to explain to you, I mean, we've all heard this, well, they're two wings of the same bird, but I'm going to explain to you in detail what the Democrats and the Republicans are all about using the book of Hosea tonight, all right? So look down at Hosea chapter number four and look at verse number one. Take some notes tonight. Write in your Bible if you write in your Bible because this will apply to you probably as long as you are alive in this country, all right? Look at Hosea chapter number four and look at verse number one. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So he's saying, like, listen up, nation, I have a problem with you. All right. So we see this object lesson that he had Hosea do where he talks about, you know, go and marry a harlot. And then he talks about, you know, this woman that was in, you know, fornication. She was in whoredom and then she became an adulteress. And he just, you know, he does this object lesson on how betrayed God feels um, with um, the nation of Israel or with any nation, by the way, that turns against him. All right. So the Lord hath the controversy with the inhabitants of the land. That means God's got a problem with you. Because why? Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Note this, if you would, because it's going to be very important for our sermon tonight. Look at verse number two. By swearing, now he gets into the things that they're doing. By swearing and lying and killing, it always comes down to killing. It always comes down to violence and killing, no matter what, you know, it starts out as when a nation or a people turns from the Lord it always turns into violence. It always turns into, you know, innocent blood being shed every single time, all right? And it's no different for us today. By lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Every single civilization that falls descends into violence. It was the same reason um, with the flood. There was just violence everywhere. It wasn't because they were destroying the earth, you know, or whatever Hollywood says. It's like man just became, you know, violent. They turned against God, and innocent people were just being slaughtered. Look at verse number three. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. So the land is going to suffer, and everyone that dwelleth there is going to suffer. The beasts of the field, the fowls of the heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. So in verse number two, we see what they're doing. Verse number three, we see what's going to happen. And look, I often think about this when I think about, you know, this happening to, you know, our nation as we turn from the Lord. Our nation as we turn from the Lord is going to get less and less prosperous. The land will mourn. You know, the land will not be 
as productive. Things won't be as economically good as they were for previous generations, and people will suffer. All right, but look, there's going to be plenty. You can see plenty of people setting up, you know, reasons for why. You know, what happens in the, in the Old Testament? You see famines. You see droughts. These are judgments of God. But what happens? Man is almost setting up reasons that those things are going to happen outside of, you know, God judging the nation. You can just see things being set up. So, you know, even when God starts judging the land and the land mourns, that people are going to say, oh, that's because of what we did. Or that's because of, you know, what, you know, just so people can still bypass God, even in his judgment. It's pretty crazy. But you can see it being set up. So verse number two, we see what they're doing. Verse number three, we see, so basically verse number one, we see why it happens. Verse number two, we see what they're doing, you know, always resorting to violence. And then verse number three, we see, you know, the punishment. But verse number four, look at verse number four again, if you would. It says, I mean, this seems kind of like an obscure verse. It seems kind of, kind of like, what does that mean? But we're going to study verse number four in detail tonight. I'm going to explain to you how verse number four applies directly to us today and how it literally sh it shows us what we're dealing with um, in the United States today. Look at verse number four. It says, again, let no man strive nor reprove one another. It's like, why is that? Why is that? I mean, here, here this entire nation is doing wrong. I mean, I mean, people need to be reproved. People need to be reproved. It says, let no man strive or reprove one another. But then he tells you why. He says, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. This is super interesting right here. All right, and this is directly applicable to what I want to talk about with the Democrats and the Republicans today. All right, so here you have in verse number four, you have people striving. You have people arguing with one another. You have people fighting, saying, you're wrong. And they're saying, no, you're wrong. They're disagreeing. But God says what? Turn to Matthew chapter 15. God says, no, no, no. It's, it's like, don't even rebuke each other. You say, why is that? Why does God tell these people that are striving to not even rebuke each other? Look at Matthew chapter 15 and look at verse number 4. The New Testament just completely pegs this. I mean, here's proof that that the same person wrote the entire Bible right here. All right, look at Matthew 15 and verse number 14. Matthew 15, look at verse number 14. Actually, go to verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my, my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Look at that. So here we see there's a bunch of people that don't have what? They, they don't have knowledge. They're not following the word of God. Same thing as Hosea chapter 4. Let them alone. Doesn't this sound familiar? It says, let them alone. Why? It says, because they be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. You see that? That's exactly what Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 4 is talking about. It's saying you have two sides striving. You have two sides fighting each other here, and one side is saying, you know, hey, you're wrong. And the other side is saying, hey, you're wrong. They're disagreeing with each other, but they're all striving with who? They're all striving with the priest. And it's saying, don't even argue with each other. You have two sides fighting each other, and they're all fighting God. And they all have no knowledge of God, verse 1. That's what he's saying. Don't even rebuke each other. It's like, just both, just both fall in the ditch. Have a nice day. That's exactly what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 15. They're both disagreeing with one another, and they all strive with the man of God. They're all idiots without knowledge is basically what the Bible is saying. Why? Because of verse number one. Because of what God already told you in verse number one. There's no truth. There's no knowledge. And where is truth? And where is knowledge? And what's a stat that I've told you over and over and over in the United States today? That there has never been a time in the United, history of the United States where knowledge of the Bible, belief in the Bible has been lower than it is today. This is exactly what we're dealing with. This, why, this is why no one, and this brings me to the point of the sermon, this is why no one today can effectively rebuke the other side today. Of these two sides that we're seeing, you know, as we approach this maddening election season, all right? I mean, this is like, a, just a simple example of this is like, you know, the the, the Democrats and the Republicans, I'll just give you a simple example. And then it came up with an analogy for you. 
But a simple example is how you see the Democrats and the Republicans, and you see them like the Republicans are blaming, you know, um, the Democrats for inflation. All right, and it's like, okay, inflation's real. Get that. Yeah, everyone knows it's real. Everyone can see it. If you can even do simple math, if you have ten, you know, ten fingers and ten toes, you know inflation's real. But for the Republicans to blame the Democrats or the Democrats to blame the Republicans, if you know anything about the history of both of those parties and what they've done to the economy, it's ridiculous. I mean, basically, the Democrats print a bunch of money to just hand out a bunch of entitlements, and then the Republicans print a bunch of money to go and blow up a bunch of countries and, and start a bunch of wars that don't need to be started. I mean, that's the gist of it right there. But the result is what? Inflation. So for one to be striving with another over that is absolutely ridiculous. But, but I'm not saying, I, I'm going to get into some detail tonight. I have an analogy for you tonight with the Democrats and the Republicans. One side is worse for sure. You know, according to Bible knowledge and according to the measure of, you know, what God's word says and who's closest to the truth, one side is definitely worse. All right. And the other side just realizes something is wrong. But the problem is neither side knows the truth. This is the problem. So I came up with an analogy for you. All right, let's build a house together. Let's build a house together tonight, all right? We're all kind of construction people. Let's say our goal is to build a house. And we have a pile of building materials, all right? We have a pile of building materials. We have a big yard. And our goal is to build this home, all right? I mean, we have everything. We have, we have just think of all the things. All, all you guys, think of all the things you would need to build a house. We have all the wood laying down there. We have all the lumber. We have all the... We have all the fasteners, we have all the, we have all the siding, we have all the sheeting that we'll need. We have the, the, the roofing materials, we have the shingles, we have the insulation that we're going to use. It's in California, so we probably won't even use insulation. We have all the interior trim. We have the sheetrock. We have the hardware. We have the doors. We have the HVAC equipment. We have the ductwork. It's all laying in this yard. It's all there. There's nothing missing. We got the plumbing. We got the pipes. We got the wires. We got everything. What are we missing? What did I miss? Did I miss anything? Concrete. concrete. We got the concrete. We got everything ready to go. We got, we got the paint. We got everything to finish out this house. And it's all, none of it's put together. It's all laying in this yard. All right? And we need to build this house. This is our country. All right? We got all the materials. We got all the things that we need. We've been given all the things that we need. We got everything there. All we got to do is pick it up and put it together. All right? Seems simple. All that needs to be done is just go to work and put it together. Now, there's two teams. There's two teams in this country that have a philosophy on how to put it together on how to use those things to put that house together. The first team, we'll call this team the Democrats, okay? All they have is gasoline and matches and axes. <laughs> That's all they have. And they really, like, all they know how to do is burn things and chop things to pieces. Look, that's all they want to do. That's all they want to do is just to destroy all the building materials. You say, why? It's because Satan is a destroyer. Satan is nothing but a destroyer. And look, this is why, look, why people follow him just blows my mind because he even destroys the people that follow him. You know, it's not like, it's not like Satan has, I mean, have you ever thought about this for a second? Have you ever thought about like Satan's goals and his motivations? It's not like he has anything else to offer. We know how it ends. Satan ends up in the lake of fire. Satan burns for all eternity. Satan knows how it ends, too. He knows that in the end, that's where he ends up. So what is he doing? He doesn't have anything else to offer. All he is doing, and the Bible is very clear about this, is he is destroying what God has made. He's just here to destroy as much as possible 
for as long as you possibly can. I'll prove it to you. Go to Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter number 2. Actually, go to Isaiah 14 first. Go to Isaiah chapter number 14 and look at verse number 12. Look at verse number 12. I mean, Satan is just, his only goal is destruction. This is the point I'm trying to get you to see. Isaiah 14, look at verse number 12. Isaiah 14, look at verse number 12. The Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? What does Satan do? He's just here to just weaken and destroy nations. That's it. He's here to break it all down. God's showing us in the Bible. He's showing us how to build it up. And Satan is just here to just break it all down. Just go to Hebrews chapter 2. He's here to just destroy what God has made. Very simple. So thus, the people that are doing his bidding, the people that are with him, they are also here to just simply destroy. And the things that they do will destroy. Look at Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. The Bible says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, this is talking about Jesus, that through death he might destroy him, this is talking about Satan right here, that hath the power of death, that is, the devil. So what is, what is Satan's only power? Satan's only power is to kill and to destroy. And even people that follow him, he just kills and destroys. You're just like, why would anyone turn against God? Even, even, turn to Romans 1. Even Romans 1. Even people that literally turn against God, they, they literally they enter into their own destruction. They become, their destruction becomes real on this earth. Look at Romans chapter 1 in verse number 18. This is why people that follow him are destroyed and want to destroy. Look at verse number 18 of Romans chapter 1. We're talking about people here in Romans 1 that have turned against God, have turned the truth of God into a lie, and that God literally gave up, gave over to a rep. We're talking about reprobates here. Look at verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed. This is super important right here. The wrath, we're talking about people who've been given up by God. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold, not, not, that's not the end of the sentence, who hold the truth and righteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath showed it to them. Notice that as we go through the rest of Romans chapter 1, the people that changed the truth of God into a lie, he gave them over to a reprobate mind, then it starts talking about men with men, and then we just start seeing all the unnaturalness, and it completely explains all the unnaturalness. But notice in verse 18 it says, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against that. So those people that have turned against God and have been given over to a reprobate mind, the Bible is saying, yes, yes, they're going to hell for eternity, but the wrath of God is on them now. They're, being, they're having the wrath of God realized upon them as soon as God gives them over. They're cursed, is what the Bible is saying. And that's why, as they've turned against God, they're cursed. That's why you see all these agendas, all these LGBT agendas and all these things. What are they doing? They're trying to destroy everything God has done. They're trying to destroy everything God has created. They're not trying to exist. They're trying to destroy the family. They're trying to destroy children. They really hate the children. Why? Because children are a blessing from God. They are cursed from God, and children are a blessing with a pure and clean conscience, the Bible teaches. And they're out to what? Break that down, destroy it. Con through what? Through all kinds of wickedness and confusion. Look, just as Satan is cursed, those people that are following him are also cursed. And so they do the same thing that he does. They only destroy. Back to our building materials. So, I mean, that's why you see the breakdown of the family. Like, it's not an accident. Satan is trying to break down the family. That's why you see, you know, the confusion put into schools to just confuse Children, I mean, just the very idea of male and female is being confused to children. Is being, I mean, it's, it's just being destroyed because Satan is a destroyer, and that's what he does. Look, only one side destroys. 
All right, so now you're like, all right. So the Republicans must be the good guys then. But here's the problem. It's not really a white hat, a black hat, white hat situation because of what Hosea has showed us. So you have one group. You have one group with our building materials in the yard. And they're just out to just burn all the materials up. They want to burn it all. They want to burn it all. They want to chop it all up. They want to dump gas on it, light it all on fire. And the other side, the, the Republicans today or the conservatives, they look at the destruction. They look at the pile of burning materials and they say, that's not good. But they don't know why it's on fire. Even though they can see people standing there with, with gas cans and matches. They're just like, I don't know what's going on here, but this isn't the way. But they're confused too. Why? They know that, hey, that's not how you do it, but they don't know why. And the answer is in verse number one, because there is no knowledge. There is no knowledge in the land. Hear the word of the Lord, the Bible says, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, all the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. See, people have it wrong today. People have it wrong today because people that would look at the Bible as judgmental and unmerciful, they have it exactly wrong because when you have no truth and you have no biblical knowledge of the word of God, that's when a society becomes unmerciful. I mean, you want to talk about destruction. How about 50, 60 million unborn children that have been murdered? That's destruction. That is zero mercy. And you talk to people. You talk to people or you listen to people talk and make arguments for why this is okay. And it's like, it's like you're listening to Satan himself. As they just talk about how it's okay to just murder tens of millions of unborn human beings. Scientifically proven human beings. But the conservative today says, I know this is wrong. I know the building materials are on fire. They know, they know that I don't want this for my children. They know that, you know, but they have no solutions other than just blaming the other guy is the best they can come up with. They just blame him for burning up all the materials. And then all of them, don't forget this, all of them strive with the man of God. So when the man of God gets up and preaches against all this perversion and preaches against the murder of unborn children and preaches against all the things that are going on in this nation that are turning from God for lack of knowledge, then everybody's like, whoa, all of them. I mean, conservatives, if, if you see like a conservative, you know, flag in someone's yard or like a Republican district or something in someone's yard, does that mean they're just like, they're going to get saved for sure? I mean, it's, it's laughable. They're, I mean, I'm, look, I'm not saying they're, they're more unreceptive, but look, conservatives are unreceptive to the gospel too. Conservatives, they don't want to hear the, I mean, I'm not saying I can't you know, paint with that broad of a brush, but look, there's plenty of conservatives out there who are very conservative people. And they might, they might think exactly the same on all the social issues that we think about, but they would, I mean, they don't know a word of the Bible, and they wouldn't listen to a word of it if he, he offered to open it to them. This is the problem. This is why. Look, but here's the thing. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. That is not going to build the house. Just knowing that something's wrong and knowing that burning it is not the way doesn't mean you know how to put it all together. You have to know how to put it together. You have to have the knowledge to build that thing. Knowing that it's on fire, hey, congratulations. But that's not going to help your family. Congratulations that you know that that's not, 
the way to build it. But you know what? You need to build those children. You need to build that family that you're trying to raise in this wicked world. And you need the knowledge of the Lord to do that. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. The good, look, the good news is this. Actually, you're turning to Ephesians chapter 6, but I also want you to go back to Hosea chapter 4. Oh, and I'm going to give you some good news tonight. As we talk about, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans, and everyone's like, we need a third party in this country. I'm telling you, Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 4, there is a third party. The third party is listed right there. Look at Hosea chapter 4, and look at verse number 4 again, if you would. Let no man strive nor reprove one another. There's the two guys, that, there's the two sides fighting right there. It says, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Guess what? There's another side, and that's the side, that's the Lord's side. That's the side that the man of God is on. That's the side that the knowledge is on. That's the side that the Bible is on. And look, let me tell you something. God's people aren't confused today. I mean, I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for the fact that I know what the Bible says. And as I see, you know, this country slide down this slope, look, I'm thankful that I'm not confused. You say, why? Why are you thankful? First of all, I don't like being confused. I know plenty of, of, of conservative, nice people that want to raise nice families that, you know, are, are trying to do the right thing in their life, and they're completely confused on all the stuff that's going on. I'm not confused. I know exactly what's going on. You're not confused. You know exactly what's going on. Why? Because the Bible tells us what's happening. The Bible tells us, why do you think the Old Testament is here? It's so we can apply it to what's going on. I mean, God, I mean, God how, how much patient, how much more patient could, could God be? as he watches the man do the same things over and over and over and over again. We are literally watching the downfall of a nation. We're watching that. But we're not confused about it. And because we're not confused about it, we can take action to protect our family and our loved ones against it. And that's why God gives us Ephesians chapter number six. The third party is you. The third party is God's people, the people that do have the knowledge of God. Look at Ephesians chapter number 6. Maybe this will uh, resonate a little bit more for you t um, tonight. Look at verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Look, whenever you see something that's destructive, you know Satan's behind it. Whenever you, as God's, per God's people... See something, look, down to the tiny, look, think of the most minute thing. Think of graffiti. Think of somebody that goes out and, and builds a $20 million bridge. We used to joke about this, by the way. We used to joke about this on how much, uh, how much effort and, and detail and thought was put into those circles on the wall of the high-speed rail. You know, the circles, they get big and then small, so it's kind of like, because the train's going to go so fast, it's going to look like this, you know, when you're going 220 miles an hour. The whole thing is going to be graffitied up. You won't even be able to see them anyway. <laughs> we used to joke about it. I mean, the whole thing is just going to be covered with graffiti. But, I mean, we think about it. It's a silly example, but what is graffiti? It's just destruction. It's just destruction. You think about all the riots two years ago, three years ago, whenever that was. You know, what did, what did Rittenhouse go to, to that to that city to do. He went there to help someone protect their business from what? From people that were just going to come there to just chop it up and pour gasoline on it and burn it. There was no people marching through the streets trying to get a message across. It was just destroy. That's how you know it's satanic. That's how you know that it's from Satan. It's because the only purpose was to burn it down. The only purpose of those peaceful protests was to just burn it all down, and that's what they did. It's just destruction. So whenever you see th something that is someone is just, they're doing something just for the sake of destroying something, it is satanic, and Satan is behind it, because that's all he can do. It's his only agenda. He doesn't have, like, another place, like God has heaven and the new earth. Satan doesn't have, like, you know, the new Venus or something that he's trying to push for. No, he's got nothing. He's got the lake of fire. So all he's got is this idea to recruit a bunch of people, to get people to turn against the Lord so they can burn it all down. That's it. But we're not confused about that. So when you see destruction, 
Don't you be deceived. You know where that comes from. It's spiritual wickedness. It's spiritual wickedness using these individual, I guess you could call them useful idiots, you know, using people to turn against the Lord. Like, I mean, think of like that deal. Like, hey, why don't you turn against the Lord? I'm going to give you nothing but destruction. You're going to be cursed in your life and you're going to go to hell forever. Who's taking this deal? A lot of people are taking this deal, unfortunately. Look at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Talking about when all this evil comes down, you know, here's the armor, here's the protection God wants to give you. And this protection is what the people in Hosea chapter 1, or uh, chapter number 4, and verse number 1, had turned away from. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with what? Truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, you know, God's saying, hey, get saved and then learn the truth. Get saved and then keep learning the truth. Get saved, get baptized, learn the Bible, read the Bible, understand what the pages of this book say, because this is the truth. And the more you understand this, the less you will be confused about everything happening out there. And the more you will be able to protect your loved ones, your family, your children, and all of your, the people in your life against this destruction that is coming. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It's saying, you learn the truth, you get saved, you learn the truth, you study the Bible, you go to church, you listen to the Bible preached, you go out there and then you tell other people the truth too. And then you get them into church and you encourage them to learn the truth. You encourage them to put on this armor that I've given them. And that, look, that, go out and preach the truth to others is what, he's, is what the Bible is telling us here. And look, as we see the destruction, we don't have, we're not confused, we know what's going on, go out and preach the gospel, that's all we can do. That's what the Bible is telling us. God gives us the ability to protect those that we love, to go out there. You're like, well, I like this one guy. I like my neighbor. Well, go preach the gospel to him. Go get him saved. Go teach him the truth so he can protect those that he loves too. As this wickedness, because look, this wickedness is coming down on him. It's coming down on everybody. Look, folks, somebody said this to me, and it was, it was really just, like, profound. Like, I knew this, but it was really profound. This armor of God is so important because guess what, folks? We lose here. We lose here. This destruction is coming. This destruction is coming. So we need to go out there. We need to get as many people saved as we can. We need to teach people the truth. Look at verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Look, it, it's your faith. The more truth you have, the more faith you will have, the stronger you will be when you get attacked. And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 1. Look, as the materials to build the house are burned as they're chopped up, as everything's lit on fire, the church is the fire, the church is a firewall. The, the word of God is the firewall against this. And at least we, look, at least we and our families, we won't be without knowledge. I take a lot of comfort in that, and, and we won't be without knowledge, we won't be full of Confusion. Look, I, and I can't imagine what it is like living through this day and age without the Word of God. I can't imagine. Look, the conservative, he's confused today. Conservative. Conservative, the Word itself. It means that you're conserving something. He was supposed to conserve the building materials. He was supposed to at least keep them. The building materials are on fire today. The conservative lost in Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 1 when they gave up on the knowledge. When they turned their back on the Bible. Because you can't keep the materials from being set on fire and destroyed 
if you don't have the knowledge. That's what the Bible is telling you in these first few verses in Hosea. And that's what the conservative lost. The conservative lost, the conservative, let, the conservative today has let go of the anchor, which is the word of God. So all the conservative is today is since there's no anchor, they're simply moving in the same direction as the, the person with the gas can, except they're just a little bit further behind. But they're all moving now. Because even the conservative today, the conservative today isn't conserving anything. They're just a little bit further behind the guy with the matches and the guy with the ax and the guy with the gas can. And they're all moving together. And that's why in 10 years, in 10 years, the conservative is going to look at the Bible with even more disdain than he looks at it today. Because he's moving now. He's not conserving. When he let go of the word of God. So they're all just flopping in the wind. And they're blowing in the wind together. And it's not going to end up in a good place. It's going to end up exactly where the northern kingdom of Israel ended up. And all we can do is preach the gospel, not be confused, and use these firewalls that God gave us to protect those that we love and those that we get saved and bring into these firewalls as well. So that explains it. I mean, they let go of the truth. Look, I get it. I get it. I'm not trying to beat up on conservative people. I mean, I have a lot more in common with the conservative today than with the guy with the gas can today. But the bottom line is they don't understand because they don't know what the Bible says. And that's why they won't be able to build the house either. Let's bow our, he bow our heads and have a word of prayer.